Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Woodsy Sunflower Crochet Dishcloth. This here is a really neat idea. I saw it on one of the live broadcasts the other day and I was really captivated by it, so I wanted to make a sample. I'm gonna show you some tips that don't exist in this pattern, just as experience for you. And there's also a crochet diagram on the second page that you'll be able to follow if that's something that interests you. And there's only technically six rounds to this. You'll use a five millimeter size H crochet hook. Make sure that if you're using this as a dishcloth or, or anything else, make sure you use 100% cotton, like this Lily Sugar and Cream. Could be Bernat Handicrafter, it could be Peaches and Cream, it could be Creme de la Creme. Make sure it's 100% cotton uh, if you're doing that. So you could also use this as a hot pad if you decided to double up on the yarn and make it extra thick, and that's something that you can decide, but you are ultimately are responsible just in case anything is hot on it and it burns your table, so just be aware of that. Let's begin this nail. So let's begin by creating a slip knot and you wanna chain a total of four to create the center ring of your dishcloth. So one, two, three, and four, and go to the very first chain, slip stitch through to create the center tight ring. Make sure that the other strand that you started with will stay outside of the, of the ring and just capture it underneath as you do round number one. Let's begin round number one now. So I'm gonna give you some extra tips that don't exist in the pattern. It says to chain four, but I only want you to chain three. It, I find when you chain four, it looks a little looser. So just chain three instead and say to yourself, that is a, a, a treble crochet. Just fake it, right? Now what I want you to do is go into the center ring and put a total of 15 trebles. So a treble crochet in, so wrap twice and into the ring. It's gonna be a tight fit, so make sure it all fits and just Pull through, pull through two, two, and two. So just keep doing that. So wrap twice and just keep forcing those into the ring and get 15 total done. So with the chain three, that's one plus 15 gives you the number 16. So you'll see 16 spokes all the way around and make sure that you do double count that before you continue on. I'll see you at the end of the row number one in a moment. So once you have a total count of 15, uh, trebles plus this one which gives you the number 16 I want you just to slip stitch it to the top of the chain three now it's gonna look like it's gonna buckle like this my other sample did that too do not worry about it trim your yarn long enough that you can get this through a tapestry needle you're gonna need to weave in your ends with the tapestry needle if you went over top of the straggler like I did then you can safely cut that down without having to put that through a tapestry needle that should never follow it on you I will demonstrate on how to secure in your loose ends now. And what you need to do is just put it through a tapestry needle and turn it to the back side of what you just did. So this was the front of the work, see how it's buckling toward me. So turn it backward and then just go down through the, the stitch there and go right to the center. The trick is, is to capture this in so that it does, it wants to stay taut but it doesn't change the shape of your circle, so make sure that you're not changing anything in that way. Then go through a different path. If you separate the plies versus just going between strands, it'll be a lot better for you, and just keep going back and forth a total of three times. So anytime you have loose ends, please do the same idea, and I will expect you to do that off camera. Like for me, I'll do it off camera, but I expect you to do that as well. So now you're gonna have this, turn, so turn it back over, and we're gonna begin round number two next. So round number two, you're going to choose any one of those trebles that you worked with and I'm going to tell you to improvise something as well here. So going into any one of the trebles, just going in and you're going to attach with a slip stitch. So just pull through and it says to chain four. I only want you to chain three. One, two, three. It'll look better. You have to trust me on that. In the same one you did the attaching to, you were going to apply uh, two more, or sorry, another treble in. So you'll apply another treble, my apologies. So moving to the next one, every one of the stitches that you'll have around will have two trebles into it. And you're gonna move all the way around in this in the same formation. So at the end of this round, you should have a total count of 32, which includes that chain three that you had. 
So please do this around for round number two. So coming back around, you will have 16 groups of two, which is a total of 32 uh, trebles, and you're just gonna slip stitch to the top of the first chain three that you started with. So I want you to fasten this yarn off, secure it in with the, uh, with the tapestry needle, and we'll move on to round number three next. Let's begin round number three. In the top of any one of the trebles, you can decide to go anywhere you want to. And you're going to just attach and it says to chain three, I'm saying to you to chain only two. That'll count as your first double crochet. It'll keep it nice and tight. There's a repeat pattern going around on this. So the next one is going to be two trebles, or sorry, two double crochets into the next. And then the next one is gonna be one double into the next one after that. Okay, and you're gonna keep repeating that same sequence. So the next one has two double crochets into it, and the next one has one. And you're gonna repeat that going around. The one just before the ending should have two into the same stitch. So just continue to repeat that going around. And this is round number three. So in coming up to the end, the last stitch before the ending is two double crochet in it, just keeping in the sequence. And then I want to slip stitch it to the top of the first chain two, and now get rid of that. And so now we're gonna do our last three rounds together, four, five, and six using the same color and we're gonna be doing that next. So let's get ready for round number four. Let's begin round number four. So the four, five, and six will be the same color unless you choose otherwise. And you're gonna go into the top of any one of the double crochets that you have. And you're going to attach, chain one and single crochet into the same stitch. But you're not done with that stitch. You're going to chain a total of 10. So you're gonna make a petal space that you'll use later. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and come back into the same one that you did the attaching to and single crochet. So now this space here will be a petal in the future. I need you to chain three. So one, two, three, and I only want you to skip two double crochet. So one, two, go to the third and single crochet in. And now we're gonna continue the sequence. We're gonna chain three again. So one, two, three, skip two and go to the third and single crochet in. And this one has a petal just like this one. So once you single, chain 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then single back in to the same one. So now you have another petal, chain three, skip only two, go to the third, single, chain three, skip two, go to the third, and this is another petal. So once you have your first single, chain 10 and single back in and chain three and keep on jumping around and you'll have a total of uh, eight of these petal spaces that'll be at the end of the round. Please do this around, I'll be back in a moment. So we're now coming near to the end and how you're gonna end this round is different than what you probably know from the past. So after you have this last petal in, you're going to chain three. You'll skip two, single crochet into the next. And what is gonna be different here is that this is where you've ended. Okay, so you're actually not attaching to the beginning, not until we start round number five. And in round number five, I'm gonna show you something that's not in the pattern as well. So round number five, it's just telling you just to reach on over and just put 15 double, double crochets into this chain 10 space. Now, from my experience, I know that if I start doing that, it's gonna look a little off. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to double crochet, and instead of just going right into the space, the first time I wanna capture that first single crochet, the top of the first single crochet area. And I wanna do that so that it anchors that down in and will always hold in that spot instead of just wanting to travel on its own. So that's considered one of 15. So now you're just gonna continue to put your, your 15 in. So that's one, this will be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Once you have your 15 in, see the next single crochet that is in between the two? They just want you to slip stitch there. So just going in and slip stitch, and that'll hold that pedal in position. And it will get held, held more in position when you do the next round from now. So right where you are, just reach on over, and this time you're gonna go right into a space because this was not existing last time we started. I don't have to worry about that. So I'm just gonna go right into the space, put 15 double crochets in, and then slip stitch to the next single crochet that's after that. And you're gonna do that all the way around, and this will continue with round number five. I'll see you at the end of the round. So I'm coming all the way back around. I have 15 in here and I want to slip stitch to the single crochet that is between. Okay, keep things nice and tight. So we're now going to start with round number six, which will be a lot easier than you may imagine. And let's begin that next. Round number six, we have to move ourselves to the second um, stitch up. Okay, so right here is the first one because we did that as your, your reach over. So we need to go here. So we're going to slip stitch two stitches over to begin. Once you're here, you're going to chain up one and you'll single crochet in. And it will get a, a little bit more interesting once you actually get over the first one and in between. And we'll finish how this is done in between when we get back to this spot. So chain up three and skip one stitch and single crochet the next and do that again. So chain three, skip just one stitch and single crochet the next. Then you're going to chain three and you're you'll be considered at the top of the pedal when you do that. Skip one and single crochet the next, but you're not done here. You're going to do a pico. So to do that, you're gonna chain up three and come into the same one, slide in, pull through and through, and that's a pico. Then you'll chain three, skip one, and you're gonna come down the other side, single into the next. Then chain three, skip one, single crochet the next, and keep moving down the pedal that way. So chain three, skip one, and single crochet the next. You should be in the second last one before the end of the pedal. Now, you're gonna immediately jump and you're gonna to come to the second one up on this one here. So here's the first stitch, here's the second, and you're gonna single crochet here. So instead of just chaining three, they want you to chain one and they want you to capture this last loop that you made, the last chain three. Just go around it and slip it together and then chain one. And that will link the two together and it will make the outside really quite stable. So back here on the pedal, you're gonna skip one, single crochet in, and you can see it's attaching now, the two pedals together, chain up three, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain three, and then this will be considered the top of the pedal. So do, do your pico, so chain three, slip stitch in, and then chain three after that. So one, two, three, skip one, and coming down the other side of the pedal. So one, two, three, skip one, single crochet the next, chain three, skip one, single crochet the next, and then you're ready to jump. So you're looking for the second one over here, single crochet here, and instead of just chaining three, you're gonna chain up one, and you're gonna loop around this chain through here, slip stitch it, and then chain one, and then come back here, skip one, and single crochet up, and now you've just linked those together like you did with there. So I want you to continue that around, and I'll show you how to finish, because the finishing is unique on how this is done at the end. Okay, when you get back around, before you do the final chain three to attach it to the second last one, you're only gonna chain one, and you have to, this first one that we started with, you have to loop around that one. 
so slip stitch there, chain one, and then you are going to come into the second last one on this side. So it's the only way that you're going to be able to finish that properly. And then you can just trim off your yarn and you'll notice that this is a lot more stable. Probably more stable than your host today. <laughs> so um, you're going to just drag the yarn to the back side of it and then you'll just turn it over and secure in any loose ends that you will have. And you can block it and etc. And this is a kind of a really cool project. It doesn't really take that long. Um, at least it doesn't for me. And it might be a good, good craft show item in order to play. And it's something that you can enjoy for whatever time frame that you have in your mind. So let's uh, continue now into another video and I'm gonna continue my filming binge today and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.